Hello again and welcome to this uh, math video where we are going to look at more logarithmic laws. We've already looked at the first two. The first one uh, we looked at said that if we have a logarithm with any base except zero of course and my input is not one and not zero is one then my output is zero. These I would suggest go and study them off by heart but if you do forget them they are very easy to go and figure out. Um, just look at the previous videos and at, uh, at the proofs we had there. Something you can literally do in under 10 seconds. Okay, uh, the next one is if I had any base and the inside of that base is itself, then this one's exponent had to be 1. b to the power of 1 equals b b to the power of 0 equals 1. So this is fairly simple. Now we're going to look at a little bit more complicated one. Uh, we'll call it logarithmic law 3 and it says that if I have a logarithm, okay, any base, and as its input I have whatever, doesn't matter what its input is, and I add to that another logarithm same base but maybe a different input then when I add logarithms I may multiply the inputs so log of B can be multiplied as X times Y and of course the opposite is true as well um, or not the opposite just the, the converse reading it in this direction if I have a logarithm with any base and the input of this logarithm is a product then I can separate the logarithm between the two factors by saying log of the one factor plus log of the other factor okay just remember to keep the bases all the time you keep the same base and this is the third logarithmic law. Let's quickly look at the proof of it. Now to prove this I'm going to show that this left hand side is equal to that this left hand side is equal to this right hand side. So whatever on this left hand side I can get the same thing as I have there on the right hand side. Let's first start off by, by, by just taking this expression. Let's say we have log with any base x and let's say this is equal if, if I solve this if I ask B what exponent must I give you to get x he tells me you must give me n as an exponent now I do the same with the other one I say okay now now B what exponent must I give you to get y he tells me well you should give me m and then I'll get an answer of y okay now look now let's take this expression Okay, but before we can, uh, well, let's let's go and do that expression. Let's say now we ask B. Okay, B, what exponent must we give you to get x times y? And he will tell you. Okay, you must give me. And what will he tell me? Okay, and this is what we what we want to find out. Well, let's first look at at this, and we rewrite this in its exponential form. In other words we have that b to the power of n would give me x that's what we said and b to the power of m would give me y okay so what happens if I multiply x and y with each other so take these two multiply the left hand side and so now I'm going to say x times y let's do this here x times y is equal to x times y is equal to well x is equal to b to the power of n so instead of x I can say b to the power of n and y is equal to b to the power of m so instead of y I say times b to the power of m and now I can go ahead and say well this means that x times y is equal to and since it's same basis I can add the exponents is equal to b to the power of n plus m now I've got a new exponential expression 
and I see, oh, look at that. Okay. If I ask B, B, what exponent must I give you to get X times Y? And look here, B to the power of N plus M gives us X times Y. Does that make sense? Okay, so if we were to answer this question that we had here, log of B x times y in other words log b what exponent must we give you to get x times y and he will answer based on this you must give me the exponent n plus m okay we are not there yet we are trying to prove this we are not there yet so far we've got that log b x to, of x times y is equal to n plus m but right in the beginning we said that n is equal to this so everywhere where we see an n we can replace this expression so log of b x times y instead of n n is equal to log b of x log b of x and m is equal to log b of y plus m which is log b of y and there we have our proof okay and uh, I think you might want to go through this uh, one or uh, two times more but then I'm sure you'll feel very confident in answering this question let's look at a quick application example So let's say we want to simplify this. We want to find out log of 4 to the power of uh, log of 4 of 2 plus log 4 of 8. Okay. Now if we just wanted to do it without simplifying, without using this law that we have here, then we'd have to ask, well, 4, what exponent must we give you to get 2? Okay, And if you didn't know, 4 to the power of a half is 2. So that's a little bit difficult. Okay, 4 to the power of a half, because the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 4 is equal to 2. That means that 4 to the power of a half is equal to 2. Okay, So that's a little bit difficult plus and this one for what exponent must we give you to get 8 that answer is 3 over 2 now how do you get that well to to get an answer of 8 4 to the power of 2 is 16 so it's not 4 to the power of 2 that's too big 4 to the power of 3 is 64 and the square root of 64 is 8. So that's 4 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay. So you can see this is this is not simple. This is not just straightforward. But let me show you if we simply use this law, we can actually simplify this question very quickly. And we, we see, okay, we've got same bases. And according to our law, if we have same bases, whether we read it in this this direction or that direction, doesn't matter, then I can make this a single logarithm by multiplying the interiors. So this one could have been log 4 and now as an interior I make a single log as an interior I say 2 times 8 which is 16. And now the question, the answer is very simple. Log what, uh, 4, what exponent must we give you to get 16? Well, that's easy, 2. 4 to the power of 2. And look at this, these two fractions add up to 4 over 2, which is simply 2. So, both ways, perfectly acceptable. Obviously, this way, much simpler. Okay, next up, um, logarithmic law 4. What happens if we divide the interior? Let's see in the next video.